morning's news. That's Boat for the Borders with Angela Suave. Investigations are underway after the death of a man in what police describe as an industrial accident in Peebles at lunchtime yesterday. Emergency services were called to Dean Park just before one, but the 59-year-old died at the scene. The health and safety executive has been made aware. Local hospitals won't be ready to cope with additional pressures this winter without urgent action to free up beds, so says Rafe Roberts, NHS Borders' as chief executive. He told yesterday's Health and Social Care Partnership meeting Borders General Hospital's surge capacity, beds open to cater for winter illnesses, has already been reached. There are no more and not enough staff already to cope with demand. Delayed discharges, currently taking up more than 70 hospital beds in the Borders, are behind the crisis. But Mr Roberts explains work's ongoing to provide care avenues for patients ready to leave. We've actually got beds open that we wouldn't normally have open, uh, particularly at this time of year, um, and so that is putting additional pressure um, on our staff. I think it is important to recognise that we are working very closely with council colleagues on this, um, and the council, I know, um, are working very hard to um, increase capacity where they can, to make more use of the capacity that they have got and make that as effective as possible and they've certainly had um, success with that and they are, probably, they are providing more care now than they were before but um, we do have this backlog, if you like, of patients waiting to get discharged into care. Staying with NHS Borders, the board has apologised for the unreasonable delay in diagnosing a child with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or ADHD. A parent complained to the Scottish Public Services Ombudsman, who found an initial refusal of a referral was reasonable, but rejecting a request for a second opinion was not. A diagnosis of ADHD was eventually made, but not until some years later. The health board were told to apologise and make changes to avoid any repeat incident in future. Northumberland County Council is expected to agree changes to schools in Berwick today, ahead of £40 million of investment, but it will mean the closure of the town's middle schools. Colin Coltart reports. Consultation has been ongoing since 2018, but the plan has now been agreed by parents, staff and other stakeholders. It would see 11 local first schools become primary schools from September the 1st, 2025. A year later, Berwick Middle School, Tweedmouth Community and Glendale Middle School would close and Berwick Academy would see its starting age change from 13 to 11. There would also be units established at Berwick Academy and Berwick St Mary's Church of England First School for children with additional needs. Most of the area's schools have voiced support for the plans, including governors at Glendale Middle School, which is set to close. But governing bodies of Berwick and Tweedmouth Middle Schools voiced their disappointments. The Council's Family and Children's Services meeting unanimously backed the recommendations this week. They look set to be approved by the Cabinet today. A former assistant manager of a Borders Hotel has been ordered to pay half of her former employer's costs following a field tribunal claim for racial discrimination and sexual discrimination. Tania Noguera was employed at the Carfrey Mill Hotel near Lauder. She took the owners to an employment tribunal earlier this year, but her allegations were ruled to be completely unfounded. Employment judges this week further ruled the Portuguese national should pay 50% of the respondents' costs. That's £2,820. Turning to sport and Gordon's Sammy Kinghorn is returning from the World Para Athletics Championships in Paris with her best ever, ever haul of medals. The 27-year-old claimed one gold and three silvers as well as setting a new T5300 metres championship record. She admits the success has given her cause for reflection, particularly on the months and years after the 2010 accident which left her in a wheelchair. It's been crazy, yeah, I think it's... Um if I could go back in time and speak to that little 14-year-old girl, I'd love to tell her, don't worry, like, everything's going to be okay. Um, I, I'm just, I'm so glad that I haven't let anything stop me, and, and that's because I have incredible friends and family. Um, honestly, like, if I was left on my own, I wouldn't be here today, but I, I wasn't. I had my, my father and my, my mother and my, my brother um, were with me all the way, supporting me and pushing me. 
A football cold stream won their pre-season clash with West Barnes 7-0 last night at Home Park. Their next match is another friendly against Bedlington Terriers on Saturday. We love Leithen have a friendly tonight. They play Kirk Liston at Victoria Park. Manager Ian Flynn is looking to fresh legs and signings for the start of their East of Scotland First Division campaign. This week it's a tale of two Rosses, Nicholson on a permanent deal and McIntyre who's played under Flynn before as has Daniel McKinley described by the club as a PC forward. Club captain Callum Mitchell signed up again too, along with fullback Nathan Masson. The border's weather, here's Cosa Quamer. It's a mostly dry start with some sunny spells. However, patchy cloud becomes more widespread during the day and the showers will start to develop, becoming more frequent too, with highs of 14 to 17 Celsius. This evening and tonight, a few isolated showers lingering at first with partly cloudy skies, but becoming drier and clearer with lows of 7 to 10 degrees. Tomorrow, though, becomes increasingly cloudy, some showers developing for most, especially by the afternoon, with highs of 14 to 17 degrees. BBC Radio Scotland's weather for the borders. Speaker, whenever you want, just say, play BBC News for Scotland. And this is Good Morning Scotland. Now, we've been discussing extreme weather this morning. Large parts of mainland Europe sweltering and the US isn't faring much better either. So if you're set to head for into the heart heat the heart of the heat wave. That's quite a difficult sentence to say. You're, uh, and you're not so keen on going. Is there any protection for you? Well, Lisa Minow is the Sun's travel editor. Morning to you, Lisa. Morning. If somebody's sitting at home now thinking, gosh, I'm supposed to fly to you know Italy or Greece next week, can they cancel and still get money back? No, unfortunately they can't. Uh, I mean, basically in terms of travel insurance and actually the um, holiday companies, it would be regarded as disinclination to travel. Not wanting to go isn't a good enough reason, unfortunately, to get your money back. The only way that you might possibly be able to get your money back, and this is if you've got travel insurance and if you've declared all of your medical conditions and issues, if a doctor says that it, you know, he, he feels that you should not travel to such a destination but because it could be a danger to your health and you're not fit to fly there and provides that not fit to fly certificate, you could possibly get your money back through sort of um, travel insurance, but it would have to be very specific travel insurance that would let you do that. Do some insurance policies not include um, major weather events in them? No, no. I mean, most travel policies do not include um, major weather events in them. So if people are worried about going... Is there anything that they can do to, to sort of move the holiday? Can they ask, um, you know, their, their travel agent or the, or the, the company they've booked with to, to postpone holidays? Unfortunately, unless you've got a fully flexible ticket um, for a flight, and um, that's not going to be possible either, I'm afraid. Um, I mean, it, it's 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 not great news for people, um, but unfortunately, unless it's a fully flexible ticket, you wouldn't be able to actually um, get your money back. 